Hi, welcome back. My name is Matt, and this is part two of our um, four-stroke simple engine build in SolidWorks. So where we left off last time was we just finished doing the um, crankshaft assembly, and uh, we've left most of the elements missing and all the rest of it because we will get to that later. So this video is on the piston. So we know what our stroke is. Our stroke is 60 millimeters. So that's 30 millimeters from the center of the crank pin to the center of the main journal. So what we're going to do is, is to keep things simple, we are going to build what you call a square engine. <coughs> and a square engine has a stroke that is the same, or has a stroke that is the same dimension as the ball. So we have a 60 millimeter stroke, so we are going to create a 60 millimeter piston. So we need to make a part there on that plane. And then what we can do is we can go to this view. <coughs> Excuse me. Now it doesn't matter where your origin is at the moment because we can change its location later. So the first thing we want to do is make the piston 60 millimeters in diameter. And we're going to extrude that. And our height, we're just going to kind of wing it. I'm going to call that 48. So there's our piston. So it's obviously in the wrong place. We don't need to worry about that just yet. What we need to do is we need to open the part um, so we can actually build a piston out of it. So there is two ways you can do this. And you can either make a revolved boss, which is this up here, or we can just make a cylinder and just start chewing bits out of it. For this example, we're just going to start with a cylinder and we're just going to chew bits out of it. So one of the first things we want to do is make the piston rings and we're going to do that by making a plane off the top of the surface and we're going to make our first ring five millimeters the other direction so we're going to flip that there like so and just so we don't forget we're going to make another plane for another ring at the same incremental there right so we need to do a extruded cut on that top plane center that up the wrong way there we go and we need to make a circle bigger than the piston and then a circle just on the inside and we can actually do a dimension for how deep the ring groove is so we're going to call that 2.5 just for the crack and it is a good idea just to dimension your outer circle so things don't get screwy later on so now that that's done We'll extrude cut that, we'll extrude cut that down, and we are going to make our ring gap 2 millimeters, Just like so. And then we can do the same on this one. Just do a sketch quickly. Do that 75. And we'll do that 2.5. Same as before. The, oh, she's thinking about it. And we will extrude cut that two millimeters as before. So now we have two piston ring grooves, and what we can do is we can actually hide them planes because otherwise we're going to start selecting things we don't want. So piston ring grooves are obviously this recess in the side of the piston wall, and the bits between here. This is actually called um, the piston, uh, the ring lands, uh, the bits of land. So if you kind of think of this as the bottom of the sea, that's the land, etc., etc. This is the piston crown, and these are the side skirts. So the next thing we need to do is pick the right orientation, and we need to put a um, wrist pin. Do you know what? I've just remembered that I called the wrist pin the crank pin, and I shouldn't have done that. I will go back and change that. What a bit of a bit of a boo boo there. Any rod. So what we need to do is we need to cut reliefs, and the way we do that is we get the top view like so. We go to sketch. We sketch on the top plane like so, and then we like to put a center. I like to put a center line in like that, and then from this center line we can cut reliefs. We'll just do a box from the center line there, we'll just call it 22 millimeters. 
actually that's no, that's right let's just do 22. We'll dim oops we're going to dimension the box itself we'll call that 22 as well for simplicity we'll put that there and we'll call that seven and we'll put this here and call that seven and it'll say we've if it says it's over defined basically the dimensions are all the same so adding an extra dimension doesn't really help you and we can just put 33 in there that really doesn't matter now the other thing we can do now just for ease is select all them mirror entities mirror around our center line and there we are just like that so now when we do an extruded cut we can just drag this out and do the same in that direction and do 34 so it's nice and symmetrical like so cut that away and now we've got two reliefs and a flat surface to put our um, wrist pin through pistons usually have a fillet there and there and the same on the other side and this is to um, like I was saying before about right angles this is to remove any stress risers that may be in the material like so so the next thing we need to do is stick our wrist pin hole so we're going to do that come off our origin so we know we're in the center and we're going to put a big hole in the middle and we'll call that 16 and we're going to measure that off the bottom and I think that should be 18 and that should put us pretty much in the middle because we're using right, nice round numbers right so now that we've got that we can extrude cut that we can go up to surface because this is going to be a constant dimension we're not going to change it and we have a hole for our wrist pin so the next thing we need to do is to cut a lot of this material out what we can do is we can go to edit material it'll be an aluminium alloy and it'll be I don't know let's just use uh, 6160 T4 there we go so there's our piston as is and if we go to evaluate like we did before and go to mass properties we can see this is 310 grams give it something like that so what we need to do now is we need to relieve the bottom we can change our view to see through wireframe and you can see our hole you can see this surface here this line here is the fillet so what we need to do is we need to chew out quite a lot of our piston so there's our piston ring groove we don't want to go that far so we'll go 52 like so we'd like to put a center line down the middle of it that and then now what we can do is the thing I do quite often is to draw a line so there's a parallel line and then we can move this parallel line to just where we want it to go so that'll be a nice thickness of material there we can then scale that off that inner edge we'll call it 6.5 like so we'll mirror that like so and then now what we can do is we can go around with the trim tool and cut off the lines that we don't need so there we have it that'll chew into the bottom of the piston quite nicely do an extruded cut look from the orientations all all over the place so when we do a relief inside a piston we don't want to go anywhere near the ring lands if you see if we go near the ring grooves that's getting really mighty thin there so we can go just about there say so that's what 32 millimeters and just like that we've got the bottom of a piston now again these are all stress risers these 90 degree perpendicular sides here and here and here and here fill it the inside of that we'll call it a three mil radius no we won't we'll call it a five mil radius change our view back there we go and we can just click on that bottom surface do a fillet there and it'll do the job for us and there we have it we have a piston 
with a relief in the bottom, piston ring grooves and cutouts for our gudgeon pin and a um, hole for our wrist pin, gudgeon pin, wrist pin, you get what I mean. Right, so the next thing we need to do is that these surfaces here are not big enough as a bearing surface for the wrist pin to go through. So what we do need to do is we need to add a boss. So if we add a uh, sketch here, get the centre of this circle, go out like so, give this a dimension, call it 25. And yep, we'll do that. Now then, we'll bring this into about six millimeters. Is that about right? No, let's go a bit further. Let's go eight, eight millimeters, like so. And the other thing is, as well, is these are generally drafted. Now they're generally drafted due to casting, and drafting basically means we just put a taper on, so you can see that's that's actually tapered. And put ten degrees on that. That looks about right. And then we'll save that. Right then, so now we've done that, we can pull that out. Whoops, I forgot the taper. Let's edit that. Oh, bloody on fire. Let's edit the taper 10 degrees. Jobs are good. Un. Put a fillet on there. Now what we have missed out is, now that this has blocked the holes again, so just for simplicity, we can put another cut in there. Up to surface, up to that surface. Jobs are good. And there we go. So that's our piston. This is our square piston. And it's square not because it's as high as it is in diameter because it's square in relation to our crank crank throw, our stroke. <coughs> Put a chamfer on there. And oh, what we did before was we went to evaluate and it was 310 pretty much. And now it's 210, so we've lost 100 grams. Again, we've lost a third of our weight just by chewing out the bottom instead of leaving it solid. There's other things you can do, they do uh, skirt reliefs, they also change the actual profile, um, leaving the side skirt here um, present but cutting a lot of this away and the reason why they do that is they need the side skirts for alignment and so when the piston gets piston slap it actually has something to contact instead of trying to tip over inside the ball. Any road, so now that's that's done we can save that piston and we can see our wrist pin that isn't our wrist pin that's our uh, crank pin but anyway moving on now you'll see that when I place this part was stuck here but if you go to your mates there it'll say in place we delete that and now the piston is free to move wherever we want it to go and we select the wrist pin hole there and the gudgeon pin hole a uh, crank pin I keep on saying that and we can make that. Now if you make them concentric we don't want that, we just want them parallel. Which now means that we cannot turn the piston, we can move it around but we can't rotate it, which is exactly what we want. And we're pointing in the right direction. So, the next thing we need to do is we need to measure our conrod. And I just want to make the next video a conrod video, so what we're going to do now is we're going to set the relationship between all these. So the first thing we need to do is we need to delete the piston because this is the crankshaft file. This part is going to be where what we're going to use to build our engine. So if we just create a block with a hole in it, like so, and that hole's in the centre of this block. We extrude this, 10, doesn't really matter what size the dimension is. And what we're going to do is we're going to call this the mounting block. Like so. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make a new assembly. 
and in this new assembly we are going to put our mounting block so as i said before the this cannot move now this is this is where the origin and everything is related to you can see that the actual plane for the assembly is based around this block so now we've got this block what we can do is we can insert our crankshaft crankshaft assembly like so and now we can make these two together make them concentric we can also make them coincidental like so and then we make this disappear by make hiding that component so now we have a crankshaft that we can rotate but it stays still which is brilliant so the next thing we need to do is go to this view put our piston our crankshaft basically upside down like that so this is where the piston would be at the bottom of its stroke like so about there now when we insert our piston like that put our piston in so now we've inserted our piston we can align the wrist pin hole and the crank pin by going to mate and we don't want concentric what we want is we want parallel like so and then we can go to rotate component we can rotate this however we want it doesn't really matter just like so and now what we want to do we want to put our piston pretty much there so when the pistons at the bottom of its stroke it's still not touching the crankshaft like so and now we have our layout for our conrod you can see there that we know that our small hand's going to be here our big end's going to be here and we can pretty much draw well it's the dimension that we want so what we can do is we can go to evaluate go to measure that hole to that hole and that gives us a dimension of 81.58 so 81.6 is the center to center hole between our small end and big end of our conrod so the conrod's going to be the next video we'll quickly save this as engine assembly engine assembly and uh, that's it for this video right see you in a bit